God bless you so much and thank you for joining us on the program Anointing. I'm Apostle Vincent Akos of Christ at the International Church. Please, shall we look unto the Lord in prayer before we commence? Everlasting Father and God and King, thank you so much for the joyful privilege of this opportunity that we'll be able, Father God, to enjoy gracious fellowship in your presence. I thank you for your people who have tuned in. I thank you for the gracious countenance of your presence and power. I pray that you speak through me, mighty God, inspire divine truth to reward the faithfulness, the dedication, and the diligence of your people. I pray that the hand of God will be lifted, your name will be glorified, and your majesty, Father God, is revealed and demonstrated. I pray may your word minister to them in Jesus' mighty holy name. Mighty God, in the various dimension that your people are tuning, believing you, those that are believing you for minutes, breakthroughs in diverse forms, mighty God, you are the be all and the end all. I pray in Jesus' name, may your word never return to you void until it has accomplished my word deliberately and purposely you are sending it to accomplish in your people's lives in Jesus' name. I praise you and I thank you, Father God, setting me apart from myself and form the truth in me and mighty God orchestrate his delivery to bless your people. We thank you, we praise you as you bless and grace me with clarity of speech and people, your people receptive faculties in Jesus' name. We thank and bless you for this moment. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. I want us to look at the word of God in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And I want us to look Ephesians chapter 1, we read from verse 19 to 22. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heaven? at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be heard over all things to the church. Verse 23 says, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking on the subject, feeble but strong. You see, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible says that for us as believers, when we are weak, then are we strong. Because God's power is demonstrated with such absolute efficiency when in our weakness. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The forces that are against us, the things that come our way, the challenges and the difficult, the day-to-day -day grind that we deal with, there are hellish forces behind them that are coming against us. But the Bible says it is not our might. Like he told Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, Zerubbabel, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You don't have the might to be able to move mountains physically. You don't have the might to deal with the forces of darkness, the cohort of demonic entities that are arrayed against us. We battle things we don't understand, challenges and difficulties that we don't understand. But our, we have to live with the comforting assurance that the one in whom we have rep repulsed our faith in is the one who fights for us. So when we take the message as God is explaining, giving to us, 
And it is quite appropriate because we live in a time with this COVID lockdown and so many things that have turned upside down. It seems that the world is in a topsy turvy situation. People are going through all kinds of problems and dealing with all kinds of incessant issues. Back to back to back to back. But sometimes we are at the receiving end. We don't even know what to do, how to handle these things. Financial issues, marital issues, and problems that, that didn't unceasingly, the devil released upon us. But the Bible is saying this, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? The exceeding greatness. And then it is like this. God is painting a portrait, giving us a pictorial vision of how God Almighty has dealt with the enemy. The enemy behind it, the architect of these problems, the one who manufactures and engineers these challenges, how God has dealt with this and how God has triumphed on our behalf. Because even in this, the Bible takes us to prophecy fulfilled. And if that prophecy had not been fulfilled, then we, according to the word of God, in 2 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23 says, If it is only in this world that there is peace and prosperity and success, then amongst all men, we who are believers are the most miserable. Because we forwent the pleasures of the world, gave everything up for the gospel. But that is not the case. There is a better place, a better tomorrow. That is assured. So God is actually in the midst of all this bleak situation. He is pointing us to prophecy fulfilled. And if the devil couldn't hold down our Savior, our Deliverer, our Messiah, our champion, Jesus Christ. For he says uh, that fire, that power is the same that raised Jesus from the grave. And not only that, but took him back that he seated further high above all principalities and powers. What is it? He's talking about the messianic psalm being fulfilled, Psalm 110, verse 1, when the Bible said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your fools too. It doesn't matter what height the enemy occupies, it doesn't matter what rank or level that the enemy occupies, it doesn't matter what kind of challenge or problem the enemy poses, he says, All your enemies, your fools, too. And Jesus Christ ascended. The Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter. chapter Chapter 4, verse 14 and 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who do not fear for us, but we have a high priest who have passed through the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says in Mark chapter, chapter 16, verse 19, the Bible says uh, he went when he, Jesus ascended, he went to heaven and he sat at the right hand of the Father. So if our Christ is seated, praise God and listen to your, your portion of this victory. Because in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, it says that we, we who are believers, we are seated with him in heavenly places. Now this is just a judicial declaration. It's a judicial declaration. It is like going to court. And then they, they say, hey, there's no charge against you. You are free. Praise God. You went, they took you in chains. You are, they got these handcuffs or restraints on you. You got the uh, prison suits and everything. They take you to court. And the judge look at the case. Maybe they have kept you in prison for some time. They, they look at the case. They say, well, there's no case against you. No evidence. And the Bible says in, Hebrew, in Romans chapter 8, verse 33, who will bring a charge against us? It is Christ who justifies. 
So they said, there's no case against you. And then they take them. The handcuffs and everything. And we are sitting down there. And there are so many people who are like that. The chains are off our hands and our feet, but it's not off our head. Because we have resigned ourselves to being bound and to being, being held down in one place. And though we've got the chance to walk out, we are still in there. We see in Acts chapter 16, the Bible said Paul and Silas were in the prison singing and praising the two of them. There were other prisoners there. God caused there to be an earthquake. The doors were open, but the prisoners were there sitting down there. Their chains are broken by the because what? They have resigned themselves to a defeatist mindset. And that is what so many of us are. Christ has set us free. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, it says freedom is what you have. Christ has set you free. Stand firm so that the yoke of bondage is not placed on you anymore. Now you know the reason why God's word is always telling us to renew the spirit of our mind. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 and 23 in Romans chapter 12, 2 and 3 because the thing is as a man thinketh in his mind, in his heart, so you see. There are so many people born again, Holy Ghost filled, blood, blood, blood washed, who has the chance, the power to use, to tap into the, the infinite wealth and power and grace in the name of Jesus Christ and the blood and to stand on his word to confess and to do warfare and battle and win but what do they do they open their mouth and they are speaking negativity they claim defeat as some kind of garment as for me I don't know what is going on when God took Ezekiel, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37, he said, the Lord took me by his son. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he took me. And he took him to the valley of dry bones, a heap, a mountain of dry bones. And he said, take a good look at it. The Bible says he went around after he has inspected them. He came to the conclusion. He said they are very dry, which means they have been there for years. Abandoned. The question here is this. These, at one point, if you go back to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, these bones, they were nothing. They were what? They were made out of sand. When God got the sun and made man out of it and breathed the breath of life, and man became a living stone. If God can use sun to make man, can God can use stones, bones, to make life? Why do we sometimes place limitations in our minds against our God? Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus went to Nazareth and the Bible said the people did not believe him so he couldn't do miracles. In fact, what the Bible says, ironically, he looked at the people, their unbelief, and he marveled. Jesus marveled at the unbelief of the people. And I believe he sometimes he does that. He looks at us and he marveled at our unbelief. How we have so much faith in negativity. We have so much faith and we are stubbornly adamant. In our unbelief and we are so convinced that it cannot happen for me. It is not possible for me. A breakthrough is not possible. I cannot make it. I cannot succeed. And we just embrace it. And the Bible said, the Lord look at them. He just marvel. He has brought miracles to town. It, what does it cost to believe? What does it cost to believe? A woman who 12 years bleeding. A feeble person, severely anemic by law, according to Leviticus 25. Anybody that he touches gets contaminated. 
spiritually defiled. But they saw her chance. I'm not going to tell anybody I'm defiled. I need this piece of this Jesus. He says, I'm not going to rest, look for ceremony or oh, how are you, Jesus, a handshake, a hug, or nothing. I will just go behind him. Any part of his body is a piece of him that can deliver me. He went, he says, if I can just touch the hem of his cup. 12 years of suffering, 12 years of enduring pain, 12 years of enduring shame, 12 years of enduring rejection and abandonment, 12 years of being ostracized, 12 years of being told you are unclean, you are defiled, 12 years of being took down. She saw her chance in the only one who can restore her. And she says, I'm not letting this opportunity pass me by. I'm not going to sit down here and say, well, what are people going to think about me? What are they going to say about me? What is the, what the, in fact, the, in the law says this, the law says this. I'm putting religion aside. Grace is on the mat. Let him hit my wagon and ride along. And she went and touched the hem of the garment. Jesus felt the power, but Jesus wasn't talking religion to her. Jesus, why did you defy me? He didn't say that. Why you know you are unclean? Why did you have to touch me? He didn't say that. He said, who touched me? Who touched me? He abounds with power and fire. The question is, there were people around him who were touching his body, but they were not connecting by faith. Some, this woman purposed to come and connect by faith and draw. You see, my brothers and sisters, what we are missing out here, God is talking about the power, the exceeding great. Look at the, 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 the vocabulary. And this is, this, if this is a human being like Shakespeare or Charles Dickens or, or Hemingway writing a book, you can say, oh, maybe he's using what, you know, um, 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 uh, words like onomatopoeia. Or domatopoeia, or using words like um, an allegory, or you using maybe a hyperbole. No, this is God. God is everything about God is big. So that's why the Bible is using language like that. It's not hyperbole. This is not exaggeration. This is a fact about God because when we talk about omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. It's bigger than humongous. Exceedingly great power took him from the death, from the bowels of the earth. And then he went, took him from one extreme to the other. From one extreme to the bowels of death. And then he ascended to the place beyond heights, the right hand of the Father, and put those enemies, and look at the, the hierarchy of demonic powers, principalities, powers, dominions. Place them at the feet of Jesus Christ. When someone is under your feet, it means you are no match. You are beneath me. That is what it means. So Jesus is, God is saying, Satan, you are beneath my son. And if you are in the button that is beneath Jesus, it's also beneath you. Because the Bible says we are seated in the heavenly places with him. He is there and then he will join because the Bible says we are joined heirs with him. So judicially we are in. So if the devil is beneath him, his demons are beneath him, sickness is anything that he brings. So that's what he say. what shall we say then? Romans chapter 8, verse 35. What shall we say? What shall separate us from the love of God? Is it height? Is it death? Principalities and powers? Is it angels? Persecution? Name it. I would say, yea, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. In the thing that the enemy brings your way, it means that you are hot. You are what the battle before it began. You are one. 
That's why we say we Christians, we don't fight for victory, we fight from victory. So I pray that this will indeed down on you and shape your thinking about yourself and how you are in Christ. The place of honor. You don't look at things that it is not what you are lacking, but what you have in the spirit. Because what you are lacking now is in the spirit. God put things in the spirit and then it materializes in the natural. So everything that we are lacking is there in the spirit. And he said also, he said, when you, you pray as we our father in our father who art in heaven, her Lord be give us this day. So when you ask the Father by faith to give you this day by faith without doubting. Because that's what the Bible says. If you ask for anything without doubting, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, without doubting, you receive it. And now he says, uh, he has lifted him above all principalities and powers, uh, and those things are names. Everything that you are going through has a name. If it is health issue, it has a name. If it's people issue, it has a name. It is power, spiritual powers, it has a name. If it is financial issues, it has a name. Because maybe you owe a thousand bucks or five bucks or maybe, you know, ten thousand or hundred thousand or hundred million, it has a name. But then he says, listen, he says, everything that has a name and things that, do, that not, does not even have names. <laughs> things, because can be a medical condition. The doctor not, doesn't even know what it is. If they are experimenting with medication, you take this medication, as you go, they, they change it, they give you something else because they don't know what it is. But the Bible says anything that has a name and those that do not have names, he that who was given the name above every other name, Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Thus far has God lifted him and given him a name above every and any other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, that every knee in heaven and on earth and beneath must go down, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the point is this, whether the thing has a name or it doesn't have a name or you don't even have a clue. Well, you know the name to call. The name that is above every and any other name. To deal with the situation that confronts you. And the Bible says he has made him the head of the church. <laughs> because it says you have seven under a head. It means that in this head, he lives forever. He's not a boss who can be replaced. He's a forever boss. He's a forever savior. He says, if someone is your head, it means he's your covering. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a high tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. We have absolute safety in him. The psalmist in Psalm 4 verse 8 says, I will lie down and sleep for it is only in you that I have perfect sleep and rest. I want to pray for you, brother. I want to pray for you, sister. Jesus solves all problems. Jesus deals with all problems. The problem is not what God is not doing. The problem is what your faith is preventing you from doing. The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible tells us, a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. And let that person never expect to receive any good thing from the Lord. If you are wavering, if you are a waffler, if you cannot be sure about Jesus, I'm standing here. I'm abundantly sure and confident. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident, that he who has begun this good work in you, he will complete it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, hallelujah. My God who has begun any work that he has begun in you, get ready. He will complete it. What work is difficult for God? Two scenarios. The creation of the world. The Bible says in the beginning the world was chaotic, formless, shapeless, darkness, and void. There was nothing there. But God saw possibility. That's what the Bible says. By faith we know that the world were not made by things that were there. But God spoke his way. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 17, he called things that were not there as if they were and they came. Don't put any limitations in your way. Don't put any limitations on God. He's above limits. I will pray that you open your heart and know that grace abounds for you. As you told Paul, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. I pray God's peace and blessings upon you. As I wind up, my brother, just lift up your hand, my sister. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for all these TV audience. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that your word will find some fertile grounds within them to bless them. I pray in Jesus' name, mighty God, the heavens be open over you. May God give you absolute and maximum breakthrough in Jesus' name. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of his goodness will come upon you. May God make you an overcomer in the name of Jesus Christ. May the heavens open up. May the hand of God touch you. May his word minister to you. May you help you to overcome all obstacles and challenges and difficulties in life. I declare you victorious and overcomer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you so much and thank you for joining us. On the program anointing, I'm Apostle Vincent, a course of Christ, it's the international church. We are one church in six places here. But please, I want to encourage you until next week. This is the anointing. Please invite your people and share the program. And if this message, be, this ministry being a blessing, call the studio and let them know the impact that it is having. Until next week, this is the anointing. Stay blessed.